All right, hello everyone. Uh, again, there was uh, quite a break between the streams, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I think uh, there was a lot of going on and uh, I have, s have some testing to do, so let's uh, do a short stream today. Oh, hello, hi everyone. It's great seeing you. Um, it's a different angle than it used to be uh, in, in this stream. We, uh, we will basically look into uh, what was happening over the last few weeks and uh, do some soldering and uh, putting stuff together. As you see, uh, there is a microscope this time. And so we will be doing something with that. And um, so let me recap. So mostly I, I did some work on the um, Bitmagic. Uh, it's mostly schematic related. We will review that uh, as a separate stream. Then uh, I've been in uh, Pasadena in, in near LA in California uh, for Supercon, which was amazing. It was a really good event. And um, we will, uh, yeah, I, I basically, you, you meet uh, a lot of very interesting people there, um, which was very impressive. Uh, I was not expecting as many uh, amazing people to come there, but uh, there were. Uh, the, as uh, Jared uh, and, or uh, Sharebrain uh, mentioned during the event, he was there too. He said that the signal to noise ratio of uh, amazing people is really high, uh, which uh, I totally agree with. Uh, uh, met a bunch of people that uh, are uh, populating my YouTube uh, YouTube list since a long time. And uh, it was great, uh, just awesome to see all those people. Anyway, so I definitely will go there next year if I can make that happen. And uh, I hope you will join us too. Okay, so that's one. Uh, two, I also got uh, some PCBs um, back. So as a, just as a side note, um, I got uh, some black magic probe uh, revisions. Let's see how the uh, microscope, oh, wrong button. Let's see, there we go. So yeah, the camera is not the best, but uh, it's better than the best thing I could get. Uh, but here is a uh, new black magic probe PCB, just uh, as a side thing. So okay, the biggest change is this resistor here. So we will be able to uh, connect some uh, new, um, basically we will be do, uh, able to do some SWO tracing or basically getting some more high speed data out of the black magic probe, which is nice. Uh, otherwise, I also got uh, the board we worked on at the very beginning. So that's that's this. Yeah, so um, basically this is the FX Grok and we will I will basically break it out uh, here. It's like if you look, we'll break it out here and uh, clean up the edges. Uh, then we will make a stencil um, carrier for this and put it together. So that's uh, another project for another stream. I hope I can do all that before I leave to Europe. Um, early December, I will be leaving to Europe to visit family and uh, then go to the CCC, to the Congress, uh, so Chaos Communication Congress, which will be really uh, awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, um, for now, um, let's uh, do some soldering. I have here this, uh, these boards. Uh, these are adapters. I actually should not have put this away because this is a good example. Oh, I have a black magic proof here. Uh, it's an old one. Ay, ay, ay. Totally, totally prepared for the stream, as always. Where is it? I didn't even think about that when I put it away, huh? Anyways, <laughs> so anyways, on the side of the black magic probe, there is the SWD connector. Um, and maybe I will find it here. Let me see. 
Uh, yeah, there we go. So yeah, so the Blackmagic probe has this uh, SWD connector on the side. It has five pins, but and this last pin is just reset. I needed to add that uh, reset pin only because um, uh, I got some microcontrollers from China in the past that had a firmware preloaded on them. So I needed to use the reset pin to actually load uh, firmware or the bootloader onto the Blackmagic probes in production. So I needed the reset pin. But in us usually you don't need it. You can reset it through the SWD protocol. Yeah, so this is an adapter that you can use on these pins here. Whoop, yeah, it's framing. Uh, so the first four pins, they match here, and you can connect it and connect one black magic probe to another to debug uh, the debugger while you're debugging. So nice uh, debugging inception. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what we will solder back together today and just to test out uh, the new microscope setup and see how that goes. My JBC soldering iron is uh, nice and hot. There you go, nice and green. And um, um, yeah, we will put that together. Oh, <laughs> this is where the black magic probe board went. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's flail around a little bit. Yeah, so this, these are the pens. Okay. Yeah, I also have a stencil. I will reuse an old stencil for the Black Magic Probe uh, uh, test boards to assemble that, but otherwise we will use a new stencil for the FX2 Grok flat boards. So what we need are connectors. These are connectors. Let me show you on the desk here. Can I adjust this? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, zoom. So yeah, um, these are just 10-pin bucket connectors. Um, this is uh, standard uh, JTAG or SWD interface. And these connectors are adapted then to a 4-pin connector. It looks like this. Let's see. Yeah, so these are just connectors like this. And uh, there are also four pin pin headers. And uh, you just plug it in and you can go ahead and debug your Blackmagic probe or flash it with a new bootloader or whatever you need when you are developing some new uh, targets. Um, that, that these are the connectors. And this we will do this on these panels. They, so the interesting difference between uh, these panels and usually what I'm using is um, that uh, normally I uh, have uh, mouse bytes between the boards, similar to the really tiny FX2 Grok here. Um, it has these tabs and uh, you just break it apart and then you just use a file to split them apart. But this ones have the so-called V-groove. Not sure I can show that correctly. Uh, it's, I cannot move the microscope high enough. Anyways, um, you see it's like half, like one third cut on both sides with a V-bit. So you can now flex it and then break it. But uh, you will see it when I have more of them attached. Uh, let's get more of those connectors. What I usually start with is uh, just the 10 pin connectors. They go, let's figure it out which way they go. So they go on top and this is something people are sometimes confused. My footprint that I have so far, I st now started marking actually pin one on the newer boards, but the older stuff because I was assembling everything, it didn't require that. Um, so yeah, um, there is this notch and I can put them in here and there is the marker is under the connector. So these two lines are marking where the cutout is. 
the reason why uh, I did that is to um, decrease the amount of uh, area it takes on the silk screen because usually my designs are very tightly packed so um, I don't have space around the part to add additional legends but uh, when the board is uh, put together and in case we use only a 10 pin connector uh, the notch might be covered up so people will not know w which way to connect the cable and I had some uh, people ask about that so in the in the more mo uh, newer designs I'm now starting to put a pin one indicator in some shape or form it would be actually nice if it uh, had an indicator on the bottom side too anyways so that's that. It's nice to see there's uh, seven people watching on YouTube now. Hello everyone, nice to see you there. If you have any questions, uh, drop in into the Gitter chat that is linked at the bottom of the uh, of the stream video and uh, ask away if you if you are curious about something. So now we will just uh, drop in these connectors and try to flip it over and uh, I did not assemble the adapters in a while so the design of this adapter actually uh, is uh, from uh, something I designed quite a long time ago if I have one of here there so this is actually designed for the Lisa S Lisa S being the really tiny 10 by 10 uh, so 20 by 20 millimeter UAV autopilot that um, has um, capabilities for full autonomy because it has a GPS on the back. But uh, due to the um, size requirements, I had to figure out how to do JTEC on this guy. So my decision went to use uh, this four pin SWD connector. Originally, I had, I think, ground power and then two signals, so the SWD and SW clock lines. Uh, and, I, or no, wait, uh, I think it is just ground, then SWO for trace data that currently no one is using, and then uh, SW clock and SW data. So, um, uh, this was the connector and then I changed the connector pinout at some point to have the ground line be between the clock and data uh, just for improved uh, immunity of signal so that's uh, that's the pinout it's not even documented on the board here but um, it's pretty straightforward you just plug it in straight so that it doesn't overlap I should I think I have somewhere a photo showing how the um, how this uh, uh, plugs in together so yeah <coughs> yeah at the same time while uh, I'm doing this a uh, test stream I know that uh, Micah is streaming and she's uh, b um, doing a lot of uh, good progress on her uh, Tuco flyer, which is awesome. And I like watching uh, the progress on that project. And uh, yesterday was a big event because uh, Micah, as well as uh, Kate Temkin, uh, they both were guests on Hedgeberg's uh, stream that I can also very much recommend. And Hedgeberg. Uh, is doing really awesome reverse engineering of uh, different game consoles on the stream and so building tools to do that. I think yesterday they were building uh, uh, e NAND e EEPROM or EEPROM or Flash uh, Flasher or Scanner or something like that, building some Verilog and uh, stuff like that, which is pretty cool. All right, so now you saw that I put a PCB on both sides so that I can flip it over so that the connectors don't fly out uh, to get it flipped over. So I have 10 connectors in place now. Now let's uh, take some solder and start soldering. Yeah, it's not, not very exciting, but you might uh, 
get something out of seeing with my normal processes of putting things together. So let's just start with one pin to tack things into place. And uh, after that's done. Yeah, another thing I changed in my setup is uh, use a lapel microphone. And I poked around with the uh, squelch and, um, and uh, noise filtering and stuff like that. It's always more yak shaving that is necessary. <laughs> Apropos yak shaving, uh, yesterday I thought I will be able to stream and uh, that didn't work out because I realized I did not have a second monitor on my uh, soldering desk to monitor to see if there is anyone in the chat or if there are any questions. So I had to uh, get a half put together um, system that I had a monitor with, namely a Raspberry Pi 3 and a monitor and get X11 running on it and all that stuff and getting Wi-Fi running on this to be able to have a computer to monitor the stream activity. So that's that was wasted afternoon there. But it's all necessary so we can make these streams. And anyways, that was all the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, apropos, more, more, uh, more <laughs> info about that. So, so the microscope, I got the whole set with the uh, camera and, um, um, and, um, uh, and the trinocular stand. So my previous microscope did, could not have the camera enabled at the same time while I was uh, looking through the binoculars one of the eyes had to be sacrificed for the camera. So um, I had to get a new microscope. And after getting most parts that I thought I needed, it turned out that the um, lens adapter from the um, C-mount camera to the microscope uh, was, uh, was wrong. It was for my old microscope. And there is no indications, it's like in the description of the microscope, they don't even tell you what the connections are or what the fitting is and what you need, which uh, camera adapter is the correct one. So I, I had to contact the seller and, um, um, and basically start figuring out. And they were like, oh yeah, we are not making any microscopes with this uh, connector anymore. And I'm like, Great. Why did you change it? Is there a good reason for that? More incompatibility. Also, as far as I can tell, the uh, new quote unquote system that they are using causes the lens in to be like much smaller and much worse quality. So if you look at this, the video, it has quite a lot of bloom on the edges. And I think this is mostly optics and not the camera itself that unfortunately is not as good as I expected despite being quite expensive in my opinion. Yeah, I can't even imagine how, how much worse the other cheaper cameras have to be if this is the quality you see. But yeah, I think I hope it is good enough uh, to actually see a little bit uh, of what I'm doing instead of just seeing me in the distance just doing something random. So yeah, please uh, let me know in the chat or in the co YouTube comments if you watch it later, uh, what you think, if the audio is good, if it is um, good loudness, do you hear some weird artifacts because I, I had that in the past, I was trying to get rid of them. And uh, also uh, let me know how the video looks and uh, if it is uh, somewhat interesting what I'm doing here. Yeah, we can just have uh, this kind of streams where I have to do something for work anyways, like for example, assembling a bunch of these adapters. And uh, we can just hang out and have a chat on the stream. So yeah, let me know 
what you're interested in. Yeah, this is this is interesting too for me. Um, the new microscope, the eyepieces are longer than the previous microscope I had, uh, and as a result, uh, I have to sit up even higher. So I think I need a new chair for my table because I have this very nice uh, uh, electronics bench. Um, that is quite high, which is nice for when you are sitting and you need to be near the work so you can hunch over the table easier. But for the microscope that is sitting up quite high, it's not ideal. Um, so yeah, I need a higher chair and my office chair that I have, unfortunately, can only extend so much. Yeah, another solution would be to weld on some uh, extensions onto the seat control because I never need to sit as low down as it goes. Yeah. Anyways, you see I, I switched to a chisel um, um, soldering, uh, soldering tip because uh, that's easier to heat up more of the pins using that and uh, then it goes a little bit faster. Yeah, and I'm trying to get uh, like a nice fillet. Uh, yeah, it should look pretty good. Let's see, can we set the zoom so that, yeah. Yeah, the nice thing about the new microscope is that it can have a dramatic zoom shot. Anyways, not perfect, but um, yeah, better. So some people were mentioning that they, uh, instead of using a C-mount uh, lens adapter, and that is um, 0.5, so one half, uh, like re basically reverse zoom uh, or magnification, uh, they are using 0.35s um, and they have better results with them. So I, I need to look if there are better C-mount to the 35 millimeter tube uh, lens adapters um, because the one I have, I am not very happy with the quality of the lens in that. But yeah, this is very, uh, very annoying to me that all this optics uh, kind of stuff. Actually, I shouldn't be complaining because, uh, to be fair, if you look at really top-notch stuff from um, you know, Zeiss or uh, Zeiss, um, to pronounce it correctly, uh, and uh, other companies that are making uh, professional-grade optics and microscopes and stuff, this stuff that I have is very affordable. Um, nonetheless, it is annoying that um, you buy something and you hope it to work reasonably well and then, yeah, to a certain degree you can agree with the argument of um, uh, if it is not um, like acceptably good uh, and you can't make it cheaper without making it shitty, Maybe you should consider not selling it at all, but this is the opportunism of today, I guess, where you just buy, uh, you just make something as cheap as possible. And even if that thing, because it has to be so cheap, is crappy, uh, you decide to just sell it because enough people will just buy it and be happy that it is cheap, even though it is shitty. So you get what you pay for. And then uh, you also decide that, uh, or I if it is not good enough to be even usable, um, plenty of people will not send it back and ask for a refund. So you still will make enough money on it to be worth it. So yeah, I think that's the, that's the problem. Uh, but yeah, 
uh, I'm I'm currently in that situation where it's like, is it good enough for this? Uh, I guess so. It's doing the thing that I wanted it to do to basically show the soldering action directly under my microscope. But yeah, it's not very sharp and has like weird artifacts. Yeah, so the nice thing would be for this kind of work to actually tack it down or even not tack it down. Um, so have a s small um, wave soldering setup maybe for this where you can just wipe it over. But the problem is that these pins go onto the opposite side. So the connectors will go on the side that I'm soldering on now. So if I just wave soldered this, then I would add solder to this um, to this connectors here. And the, this would lead to a problem too, because then how do I solder the other side? So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The whole stream situation might be better as soon as I, um, as we move on to more interesting stuff, namely to work on um, the FX2 Grok that we have to so, um, put together. My thought process was um, the problem with that is after we assemble it, we have to test it. And I'm not exactly sure how to set up my laptop and the software beforehand so that we can test it hopefully successfully and this is, will not get stuck on the software side of things. But I guess it's okay where we just build it, put it together, connect it to Seagrog, and hopefully it will work. And, um, and something I did, didn't figure out yet is how do I program the uh, configuration flash chip? Uh, I'm guessing there is either a way to do this through the FX2 chip somehow uh, with some kind of uh, specific software or I will have to do it in circuit using an external flash programmer. Yeah, anyways, if you know better, oh yeah, I should have checked. <laughs> Great, are the, all the notches correct? Because I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. And it's, okay, these are slightly crooked. I'm not super happy about that. Yeah, maybe if I, move this like that and then let the pins move and now we have short grade that's no no bueno uh. there we go yeah so we will clean this I think that's a good idea. Yeah, clean it before. Yeah, one thing you can do is do the mm, domes over the pins just like um, um, uh, bolt port does as a bolt port uh, approach. <laughs> and <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, somewhere, um, someone posted the picture of the mm, bolt port uh, uh, thing put together and using nice round blobs so that it is nice and smooth uh, and doesn't catch. <laughs> and uh, as, as Twitter tends to be, it's full of opinionated nerds. Uh, it, they attacked that guy with the, like, I'm, I have not seen such viciousness where it's like, you must not do it because there are standards and there are reasons that you must not do this. These are cold solder joints, Jesus. Anyways, <laughs> not getting the point that it is more of an art uh, art thing than than a uh, functional device. But yeah, to a degree, you might might having a good point. But on the other hand, you just solder it. You have you inspect it then and then add the balls, and then it should be fine too. It's like yeah, I don't know. People get hung up hung up on things like this more than they should. All right, let's get some Kimpex and 
Uh, let's get some defluxer. Yeah, maybe we will do that with this overhead camera. So I probably should have like an, another camera that is just looking at the desk additionally to everything. Oh yeah, chairs. Yeah. <clears throat> The audio is a bit low. Oh, thanks, thank you, PD, for the for letting me know. I will try to fix this. Just give me a second. Uh, filters, compressor. Yeah, so I will bump it up to. Yeah, maybe like this. Let me know if this is better should be a little bit louder. <clears throat> yeah, I'm also uh, speaking a little bit under my nose here. <laughs> it's a direct translation from Polish, I think. Uh, yeah, or is it German? Unter der Nase sprechen? Pod nosem, gadać pod nosem. Yes, it's, it's Polish. I sometimes have to figure out, it's like, where, where is this idiom actually from? Which, which language of mine is, is trying to uh, to survive here. Oh yeah, oh, let me tilt it down so that you see what I'm doing. Yeah, so basically just uh, spray it over. So what I use is this text spray stuff. Uh, it's probably very nasty and bad for you, but I don't care, it's good. It works like a charm. It cleans up stuff. And we can just clean it up and brush it with a brush. I need one of those carbon brushes though. It's like for, for active electronics, it's probably not a good idea to use just a toothbrush. It works well though. Yeah, let's see. Yep. Yeah, looks nice. The flex is gone. That was, did, uh, Fast business with it. Yeah, I could use isopropanol probably for this, but the, the defluxer works much better. And uh, yeah, it's like that's the price I pay. All right, so this is that. So now the interesting thing is, let's see. Um, I yeah, so. Uh, I I think I have to crank it up a little bit more than this. Let's do like 2.1. So this is only 2 dB down on the compressor output. Or 3 dB down, okay. Now well, let's close this and see. Um, yeah, we are, I'm not sa uh, saturating the audio here at all. I was trying, okay, let me close the door. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was trying to do, do the settings for audio a little bit better, but um, I'm having the problem that I think my USB to audio device is uh, has a little bit um, too much like hiss coming out of it. It's a cheap USB to um, audio converter. I should probably get one of those um, nice preamp um, outputs and uh, be over with it. Like M Audio, I think they are called. Yeah, there there was one even on on, on Craigslist the other day. Um, Jared sent me a link to that. I should probably just buy that and be done with it. So the interesting thing is now, um, if I don't break it apart. Uh, as is, if I put the connectors in, like if you look here, I put the connectors in. I need more of those connectors. Yeah, like look at these two. So 
I will not be able to bend the boards properly backwards because these connectors will, will collide with each other. But also, these connectors will collide with each other. So I will be screwed. So now I, we have to break it apart already now. And to do that, let's take pliers. Ah, there is a better pair of pliers here. Pliers. So this way, it's easy. Let me show you here. That's easy. That just breaks apart like this. And I could theoretically try to break it apart, but it's really stiff. So this, uh, these are still boards from um, PCB card. It's, uh, that's why they are um, V-grooved. Um, yeah, I'm mostly uh, getting stuff from Oshpark these days uh, because uh, um, they are do making the boards in higher quality. So yeah, just like that. And um, uh, and they are local, and I like buy, uh, supporting U.S. businesses that are local because it's good to have them. And um, I'm not. Yeah. Anyways, there we go. Now this one is broken apart, and let's do the same thing with the other. Yeah. Also, PD4Z, if you can tell me if the audio volume is better now, that would be great. Because I don't hear myself. Ah, oh, apropos, I thought there was no monitor function in uh, uh, OBS, and I actually found an option to do uh, monitoring of audio. It's uh, quite hidden in like advanced settings of uh, the audio section, which is a bit annoying, but I found it. All right, so these are now broken apart. We could just solder more, more of the panels here, but um, what we will do now is just uh, plug these in. Oh, the other way around, haha. -ha. What was I saying? This way. So we will do this. Where is this? There we go. Do this like this. And then make an array of those and solder them up. More connectors. Ooh, flying all over the place. <clears throat> yeah, okay, let's see. It's all good? All good. All right. Um, this and one more and one more yeah we just ran out of those uh, adapters because a bunch of people were buying them in bulk for different projects and so so yeah, yeah, I should probably, so yeah, you can find them on the one bit squared store. Uh, what I currently don't add usually to them, or it's not listed on the product description are the four pin connectors that go on the opposite side that you need to solder in into the uh, Blackmagic probe. So this is something I need to fix. It's on the to-do list. But yeah, I usually when people are just ordering them, I just drop in the four pin connector in there. It's not a big deal. All right, let's sit up. Okay, let's adjust the camera again. Not from the messy desk. There you go. Yay. So you can. <clears throat> All right. So basically, what we need to do, that's the interesting part. I. Usually, it's like, is it visible even? Yeah, I don't think it is visible. There we go. So, yeah, the field of view on on the binoculars is better, as well as the depth of field. So that's the 
difference. Yeah. yeah, there is not a good way to keep this whole stuff uh, perfectly aligned. It's not a big deal, it will work. It's just uh, not perfect aesthetic. I don't want to burn myself either. Who likes burning themselves? But this is the sacrifice when you're putting electronics together. That's the sacrifice to the greater electronics algorithm. <laughs> you have to burn yourself from time to time. Just grow thicker skin on your fingers. There we go. And there you go. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, one adapter. The footprint is on the top. I see that. Yeah, I I don't know how I I think I did just designed it as a from top down view. It's a long time ago since I made these. Should make a KiCad version of them, and then maybe post them even on Oshpark. It would be useful probably for some people. On the other hand, I might want to make a version of this adapter that has the reset line connected, so the five pin. Uh, version of this. To basically uh, make that um, nicer. Wah. It's all flying all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, very much handmade for you. Oh God, but yeah, we can just hang out and do this. There we go. Is it now straight? Not really. Still not straight. Is it straight now? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, mostly I I, I'm pl I wanted the stream to be there so that we can test out the new setup, test the audio, test the new camera for the microscope, and have some footage from this, and uh, share some updates of what was going on in the meantime. Yeah, I have to basically um, dig out all the parts that I need for the FX Group flat. Because uh, we could continue working on the uh, bit magic, um, but I'm a little bit afraid that I won't be able to get it done in time before I leave to Europe because I'm leaving soon. Uh, meaning, um, uh, meaning that uh, yeah, it won't matter. I can just continue working on that while while I'm traveling, and. Uh, maybe even order the boards to Europe while I'm there. That might be an option because I know uh, Mubes was uh, really waiting on um, on getting those uh, the, um, the Bitmagic boards so that he can continue his work on the tracing stuff. But um, yeah, the, the other thing is, oh God, what did I do? That's a mess. And I'm completely outside of the view here. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious how much of the 
So the interesting thing was when I was setting up the audio, I was thinking, oh, my laptop is still making too much hissing noise and too much, like, that's where the uh, noise is coming from. But it turned out that uh, the audio front end was actually creating most of it because I, I disconnected the lapel microphone completely. Um, and uh, it was the same level of noise. It's like, Jesus. Oh well. Yeah, I even tried to connect somehow my the lapel microphone to the internal um, audio card of the uh, of my laptop, but that's a dumb idea. So first of all, it didn't really work, and second of all, that's probably won't work very well anyways because the Lenovo's are not very audiophile <laughs> audio car uh, audio equipment in there. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I just uh, the other day, uh, Rene Ribe, a friend of mine uh, who has also a YouTube channel, you should check it out, was uh, doing a full uh, audio spectrum analysis of the output of the newer Lenovo laptops, which was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Getting hungry. It's almost dinner time here, so we will probably wrap it up rather sooner than later, and uh, we will have some content blah, to look over. I'm curious, how long are we are we live now? Half an hour. That's nice. It's very short. If I now stop, it will be the one of probably the shortest stream we did so far. So let's go for a little bit longer. It's like, yeah, it's mostly boring stuff. I, this is what I spend most of my time with. It's just uh, soldering stuff together or assembling stuff on the pick and place machine. Yeah, that's, that's why I was not streaming. So besides the um, uh, Supercon, Hackaday Supercon, I, I had to do quite a lot of uh, um, like magic probe assembly because I had to catch up again on uh, I mean it's a good problem to have I'm not complaining at all just uh, manufacturing needs to be done and uh, yeah because uh, it's not very yeah we have to do that on time yeah and also we this what this is also the time where we ran, ran out, run out of parts for the Black Magic Probe, so I had to start pulling together all the different vendors. That's where I need the parts for for future batches. And so yeah, that takes time. Yeah, the the interesting thing there is I sent. I think the, the main vendor that where I'm buying most of the parts from. I think I sent them an email with the list of components I need from them two weeks ago. I don't think they, they sent me a quote yet. I really have to call them and be like, hey, what's going on here? I need my stuff. It's not a big deal because the one part that uh, I'm missing the most, it's the front end um, transceivers on the Blackmagic probe. Yes, the Blackmagic Probe has front-end transceivers. Who knew? Anyways, um, they um, these they don't have them in stock anyways, so uh, I would have to wait for several weeks for the factory delivery anyways, so I wouldn't get them before I leave to Europe anyways. So it's not a really big deal. Um, most important, I had to order them separately to get a few to do some additional assembly anyways. So I did that. <clears throat> yeah, it almost would be useful to have um, like a um, square inside the inside the microscope that is indicating where the framing is 
of the uh, of the camera itself. We know these things exist. Special uh, glass pieces that add markers to your to your optics, like uh, center hash or center mark and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, we are almost done with the first panel of those. Yeah, I'm mostly lazy using the microscope for this because the uh, half pitch or the um, 0.05 inch pitch connectors, you can solder them very easily by hand. It's like the surface tension will just draw the stuff in and make the connectors. And so my eyes are, I think, still good enough to see that. But uh, it's just easier if you have the microscope. It's mostly laziness. Yeah, a lot of people are complaining that uh, the 0.5, um, 0.05 uh, inch pitch uh, stuff is uh, so unfriendly to uh, to uh, hobbyists. Most of electronics these days is very small, and so uh, pushing yourself to be able to deal with little bit smaller designs um, is a good thing, in my opinion. So no matter if you're a hobbyist or not, um, it's a, it's a good challenge. So I actually always enjoy to push, push the boundaries and see where, where, where I'm comfortable with. And I do understand if you have like O2, O1 uh, components and you want to solder them by hand. Okay, that's, that is annoying. Um, it's possible, but it's annoying. So I, I don't do that. I stay at uh, 04, O2 components and that's fine. But uh, yeah, I I'm, I'm disagree with those that are complaining about uh, this connector. It's like, this is 1.27 millimeter pitch. It's not like it is 0.04 millimeter pitch or something. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, and this is crooked. God damn it. Come on, rotate. You can do it. Ugh. Yeah. Well, you you will probably stay crooked then, because I'm. Oh, I'm a terrible person. Okay, let's try it again. Let's hold. There we go. Is it straighter? No, not really. There we go. So it's straighter. Ow, hot. See, sacrifice. Yeah, as you see, the the connect connector pins here are uh, staggered. Something. Um, yeah, where is my stick vise? Oh, it turns out that. Uh, where is my mouse? What happened with my mouse? Is this completely frozen? The Raspberry Pi crash. <laughs> oh yeah, it's completely not moving. Interesting. Yeah, the Raspberry Pi crashed completely. Yeah, I was monitoring the chat over there. So let's see, let's open a browser on my laptop instead. Uh, Chrome, 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 Internet. Yeah, actually I want to uh, look into the, the new Quantum Firefox is really cool. It's really fast and it has a lot of rust in it, which is awesome. I want to support that. Um, yeah, so on my Mac I actually switched to uh, using uh, Firefox, the new Quantum version. It's uh, really fast. It's impressive. Like definitely better than uh, Chrome. 
Okay, let's go. There we go. Let's see. Uh, so, hey Bob, nice to see you here. And this is not for a stick vise. I have my stick vise, but this this is not something you want to do with this stick vise because all the connectors will f just fly out. So yeah, it's not really an option. <clears throat> Let's see if uh, I can see the YouTube um, chat. Yeah, I thought I can use the Raspberry Pi for all this, but I think I need a separate computer for this that is not crashing because the Raspberry Pi is a little bit too unstable for this. Um, Uh, user, there we go. Okay, so the audio is much better. Thank you, PD4Z. Are those the LA connectors? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure. What do you mean with LA connectors? So um, Julian X Warrior um, was is asking, "Hi, finally can see the stream live. Uh, just joining. Are those the LA connectors?" Um, first of all, thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm not sure what you mean with LA connectors. The connectors in that I had in for for the workshop during SuperCon are different. These are just connectors for um, uh, for uh, for the Black Magic probe debugging. I didn't have them with me. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will have to figure something out. Yeah, probably what I need is actually connect a second uh, monitor to my main streaming laptop and maybe have the chats on the second monitor. The problem is I, I have trouble with having uh, Linux figure out how to do multiple desktops rec in recently. Anyways, I did not have this kind of issues back in the day when I was using Linux, but it's... Uh, it also took much more effort to set it up. It's, uh, it didn't like detect the monitors automatically back in the day. Now it theoretically does. But the window manager is having a lot of trouble. It doesn't know what to do. It's like, oh, so should I make the window all across both monitors? That's what you want me to do? It's like, no, stop it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, so the... I think last year, yeah, at the B-Sides PDX uh, last year, <laughs> I, I, I tried to use my Lenovo for presentation and connected it to the um, projector and it totally couldn't figure out the resolution of the projector. It was all over the damn place and I could not set it up correctly. It was super frustrating, especially after using a Mac for all these years where this kind of stuff like multi-desktop and like connecting a new monitor, that's something you just expect to work, work without any problems whatsoever. Going back to Linux and seeing how crusty it still is, is just mind blowing. Yeah. Let's hope that Wayland will be able to sort it out. Anyways, I think dinner is ready, so I will, um, I will probably finish with this panel here, and uh, we can do some streaming tomorrow. And uh, I hope I will be finally ready to do some SMD assembly. So the oven is not in my office, so this means um, during the stream I will have to run out really quick onto the porch where the where I usually put the reflow oven and um, um, and put the board into the reflow and then we can pick it out up there again. Anyways, 
So here it is. Let me show you. Uh, there we go. There we go. Um, so that's the yield of our work here. Yeah. So these are the connectors. Would we'll, would we'll focus. Focus. Yeah. There's a lot of trouble focusing so close. Anyways, so these are the connectors. We have a bunch of them, 10 of them. So yeah, now you can have them. Yeah, it's quite useful. So okay, you basically take the black magic probe, you plug this in here. Oh, this is the wrong one. Um, where is it? Do, do, do. There. Let's take this guy. Yeah, so there is the connector. You just plug it in. And then uh, the JTAG cable goes in here. And uh, you can flash and debug the thing. So th th this is what I also use to uh, flash the bootloader onto them. But I don't solder a connector on there. What I do is uh, let me show you here under the microscope. Now that we have that, yeah, there we go. So that's that's a nice pogo pin adapter that I made myself, and this is just hot glue molded. So yeah, I can just poke it in here and have the whole center the pogo pins, and this is how I flash the bootloader onto all the all the boards and yeah it, the black line is marking which way I should use it and that's it so yeah that's a nice nice thing it actually was for something else originally but I already had four pins on this and had cables on this um, I'm not exactly sure I think what I did is take a connector and plug in the pogo pins in there then I glued over this with hot glue um, and uh, after it cooled partly, I shaved it off to make it more of a nice shape, and that's it. And on the other hand, on the other end, I have this uh, sleeves. It's basically just crimps for the 0 0.1 um, inch pitch uh, headers that I have connected to a 20 pin adapter. And uh, yeah, this makes it very flexible and easy to adapt to whatever thing I would use it on there. Um, oh, apropos, uh, I am looking into getting some nice, I will show you on this camera. Let's jump back. Yeah, camera action. Um, so yeah, these are jumper wires and using silicone wire instead of um, um, so this uh, this would be um, uh, PVC sleeving it's uh, stiffer and has less strands this is nice and flexible and supple and then there is the third option of doing that with uh, uh, PTFE and PTFE is Teflon which is high temperature resistant just like the silicone but silicone usually has thicker insulation uh, than the PTFE. Uh, still, I, I, I'm curious actually what your opinion is. Which one would you prefer? Um, but I think we, so currently I, I'm pretty set on doing them in silicone. So you have nice, uh, easy connections. I think I have uh, test. yeah, there we go. I have tested it with, yeah, Salia logic. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so a pin header. And I have here a few more prototypes. And uh, the nice thing about this, it's like you can just easily connect it. You don't have to fight the wires. They will just be there and then unplug it and plug it in again. And yeah, uh, I think this will be nice. Also, the high strand uh, wiring will be nice and flexible. So you can connect it into weird places too. If you have something internally to wire, wire up. Yeah, anyways. I'm curious what you think about it because uh, that would be a nice set. 
the idea was to make a set of 10 different colors and put them in a bag and uh, have them as a product on the one bit squared page. Anyways, all right. Um, that is a super short uh, just uh, stream. Like we, yeah, it's like after half an hour, the uh, Raspberry Pi just uh, crashed on me. So I have to figure that out. <laughs> Uh, another yak to shave, I probably need to get a new computer to drive this. It's like, it's never ends. All right, thank you so much for joining. And uh, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.